Thanks for checking out today's video. We are doing stage two build of the Poseidon X gravel bike. We're gonna make this thing even better than it already is. This Poseidon X delivers in pretty much every area. We've already fixed the brake issue. So the Tektro brakes are just awful from the factory. But other than that, I can't really think of anything that I really dislike about this bike. The Tektro brakes, like I said, are awful. We replaced it with the compressionless brake housing, which really, really added to the ability to really clamp down on those brakes and be able to stop really, really quick. So that fixed that issue. So guys, we're only going to be making this bike better and better with every single build we do. So today, without further ado, we're going to be going ahead and adding some new pedals. These are the Fuker flat pedals. These are just regular mountain bike pedals. And the reason I opted for these just flat platform pedals is because we're going to be using this bike mainly as a commuter bike and as a fitness bike. And if we take it off road or anything, we're going to be able to get off the bike pretty quick if we get into some of those issues or whatever where we might be unstable or something and we have to jump off the bike pretty quick. But these Fuker mountain bike flat pedals are really nice. They have really nice bearings in there and it just seems really smooth out of the box. And I've ran Fuker pedals before on my mountain bike and they just perform very, very well. So these are going to be one of the upgrades that we do on this bike. The big part of the build that we're going to be doing today is going to be adding a new bottom bracket. And we went with straight Shimano stuff here. I didn't want to go for any of the low end, a single chain ring crank sets that you can get on Amazon for like 50 bucks. I didn't want to go with one of those. I wanted to stick with some high quality components. So we went with one of the nice Holotech bottom brackets from Shimano. <clears throat> And we went with the Shimano Claris road crank set. And this is, once again, the Holotech system. But we're gonna be converting this two by chain ring to just a one by to fit the bike. But this crank set is super nice, guys. And that is what I wanted to stay with. I didn't wanna go with something that's gonna make this bike even less than what it currently is. So we're gonna switch out this pro wheel crank that it currently has with that square taper bottom bracket and really enhance the performance and everything going to this Holotech bottom bracket. So we're gonna do a weight comparison too to see how much this crank set and the bottom bracket weighs versus the new crank set and bottom bracket that we have from Shimano. All right guys, if you like videos like this, please help out the channel, leave a like. Also, we'd love to have you on the channel. We have a lot of different bike related videos and just outdoor related videos as a whole. We're getting into just about everything. And we're going to be doing a lot of mountain bike videos coming up here in the near future. We're actually getting this bike out. Once I get that T7 fixed, we had some issues with it, with the spokes and things. And we're going to be converting it to tubeless. So please stick around for those videos. We'd love to have you hit that notification bell so you can get notified of it. And guys, let's dive into this video right now. So you can tell that square taper bottom bracket already has all kinds of dirt and crap all down in here. So we're going to be taking off the left crank arm first. And they're not bad looking crank arms, but we just really wanted to get rid of this square tapered bottom bracket just because it's not the smoothest thing in the world. And going to a Holotech system is gonna save us on weight as well. So we'll remove this first. That thing was really loose. That's not good. And that's the problem with these type of square taper bottom brackets is they come loose so often. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been on the road with one of these and all of a sudden you can feel the wobble in it. And then in a hundred feet, your, your whole crank arm falls off. So just a terrible system. Going to a Holotech system is really going to improve everything. So if you don't have one of these handy, this is just a crank arm puller. And all this is, it just threads right into the threads here. You can see how this is pushing it off of that spindle. And there we go. A little square taper there. Not a very good design. Okay, now we're gonna grab our bottom bracket removal tool. And if you don't have any of these specialized tools at home, 
you can really buy one pretty cheap on Amazon or Walmart.com. That's where I bought these Venzo. And it was a whole bicycle tool set. And I think I paid like 50 bucks for it. So it's a good investment if you're gonna be working on your bikes. Instead of going out and buying one of these items at a time where you could spend 20 bucks on one of these or even more, you know, you can just buy a whole kit and it's not the best quality, but it'll get you by. Uh, but less than 50 bucks and you have it forever. Okay, we're gonna set the bike on the ground so we can get more leverage on it. All right, it's coming out pretty nice and easy now. Let's see about the other side, it should have worked it a little bit loose too. Yeah, there we go. But nice and easy now. And it's pretty much just the same on both sides. You have this English threaded bottom bracket. And we're gonna see how much this thing weighs too. I guarantee you this thing weighs quite a bit more than the Holotech system we're going to. Right, we got the other side off. And all it is, it's just threaded on on that other side. And then we can pull it out. Well, there's the branding on it. Guinea, Guinea, uh, yeah. Not even gonna try to pronounce that. But this isn't that bad. I mean, it feels pretty smooth right here in my hand. But I will say when I first got this bike, it was popping and cracking pretty bad. It wasn't the smoothest thing in the world. But at least this does have cartridge bearings. And I was under the impression that this probably had ball bearings in here, like some of the really cheap ones. But this one actually does have cartridge bearings. So they didn't go with the bottom of the barrel type bottom bracket, but this overall is gonna be way heavier than what we're going to. So we're gonna go ahead and get the chain ring onto the Claris crank set, and then we're gonna to try to get the bottom bracket installed, and then we'll keep you up to date. Okay, so we have the crank set bottom bracket all together. We're gonna to go ahead and get this thing weighed to see how much it weighs. All right, 1.63 pounds, 0.60. So roughly the same weight, honestly, but we also have to think we have two chain rings on here right now. So we're gonna be only going down to one chain ring. So we're losing a little bit of weight there. So overall, it is gonna be a little bit lighter, but the biggest advantage of this is gonna be it's so much smoother than that existing bottom bracket that was on it before. So one of the first things we're going to do is go ahead and convert this Shimano Claris 2x. You see there's two chain rings. We're going to convert this to a 1x. Right, so the outside just kind of pushes off of here. Go ahead and get this out of the way. So I did decide to go with this wolf tooth single chain ring and this runs about 89 bucks depending on where you buy it. I bought it straight from wolf tooth and this thing is just super high quality. I really like it. It has the drop B design also has the narrow wide chain ring and that is going to minimize the chain slap and things as we're going over rougher terrain. And this is going to be an awesome upgrade. It does have the elliptical design. It is spaced out a little bit different than a normal chain ring. So this is designed to run with most Shimano crank sets. All right, I did break out the torque wrench for this to make sure we get the proper torque spec. And I did tighten this down to about eight Newton meters. That way we ensure we're not stripping out these little chain ring bolts. 
Now, scouring the web, I couldn't really find any chain rings that would fit the Shimano road style crank set. So I really had to go with this wolf tooth and it did cost a lot of money, but guys, I think it's gonna be worth it. This thing is super high quality and it looks really good as well. All right. We have the bottom bracket all greased up and ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and insert this in. It's super easy to do. And as long as you have the right tools, you can get this thing tightened down nice and easy. Usually the bottom bracket is gonna be labeled which side it is. So you can see the R right there. So that is meaning it's for the right side of the bike here. This thing should thread in nice and easy, really smooth. We have our bottom bracket wrench. You can see how that's gonna match up nice. All right, I'm just barely snugging that down. I'm not wrenching on it too hard. All right, it's time to see if this new crank set actually fits with this new chain ring. And this chain ring is designed to actually improve the center line of the chain. So it pushes it in just a little bit. And hopefully, since this is actually made for like a road bike and not necessarily a gravel bike, because the frame and the chain stays are just a little bit different, hopefully this actually fits. So let's give this a try. I think we got enough clearance. I think that is gonna be just perfect. All right, I am super excited right now. This actually has enough clearance. You know, I was a little skeptical that it wasn't gonna fit just right. With that 38 tooth chain ring, it does in fact still clear this chain stay. It's uh, looking nice down in there. Still need to wipe off the grease and stuff, but this thing is just gonna be awesome. A very big upgrade over the last bottom bracket and crank set that we had on this thing. So with a type of crank set like this where it has a Holotech bottom bracket, it's gonna have these little splines on it like that and that's gonna match up to the splines on this other crank arm. And literally you can't get this messed up because there's only one way it can go on. But keep in mind with these Shimano cranks, there is this little plastic tab right here that goes down and it actually locks in this little hole that's on the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it right there. So it locks in there and it kind of retains that if the screws were to come loose, your whole crank arm is not going to fall off. So it's going to give you a little bit of time to actually, you know, get that thing back on. So we're just going to slide that on. So now we're going to grab the other little piece that comes with it. It's like the end cap here. Go ahead and thread that in. And keep in mind, this is plastic, so be very careful not to strip this out. It could happen very, very easily. And then if you have a little adapter right here. So what this is going to do is actually tighten up the clearance right here and actually get this as tight as possible where it needs to be on that crank arm. We're just gonna barely snug this down. All right, that's gonna be good. So with the bolts loose, we're gonna go ahead and take this little tab and push it in. Okay, make sure it goes in there. Just taking my thumbnail and kind of pushing it in. All right, so that's in there. Now all we're gonna do is alternate, tighten these bolts up. There is a sticker right here that says to tighten between 12 and 14 Newton meters. And I do have a little torque wrench here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use this regular Allen wrench to get these kind of snug before we break out that torque wrench.
get the little torque wrench that we have. We're gonna go ahead and install these Fuker pedals. I think that it's gonna be a nice addition. They have these nice metal studs. That's really gonna give us a lot of traction so we can have a nice uh, foothold on these things when we're pedaling. All right, snug those down. Look very, very nice. There's zero play in those bearings. They're really nice and smooth. All right, we have everything installed. I think this is working out really, really nice. Pedals are nice and smooth. This whole bottom bracket, crank set assembly, everything is working as it should. Very, very smooth tight tolerances all the way around. I really like how that bottom bracket is gonna give us the ability to get the bearings further away and provide a very stable working platform as far as pedaling goes. Because before you think the bottom bracket is very thin and it only is right here inside the actual bottom bracket housing. But now the bearings are spread out a little bit further and it's gonna give us more stability and it's gonna be a smoother overall bottom bracket. Nice little look from the, the underneath there. Look how wide that is. Very nice upgrade. And once again, these are 68 millimeter bottom brackets that you want for these road bikes, typically English threaded. And these are just the Shimano style Holotech bottom brackets. Now this is just a bonus, but we're gonna be adding this Ergon saddle. Sink. Okay, it's been good for about two months, but you can tell, I don't know, it's like not very sturdy. It like clicks every time you go across a bump, it rattles, just drives me nuts. But other than that, it's not too uncomfortable, uh, but I do like a ridge right there that way it takes some pressure off of uh, those sensitive parts that you really don't want all that pressure on. So I'm gonna show you what I have to fix this and we're gonna go ahead and go, go through the install. All right, here it is. We got the Ergon SR men's road bike seat. And this one is in the medium large. And on Amazon, they had a couple different options as far as how wide your sit bones actually are. So I went ahead and just got this one. It's roughly this, almost the same width as this one even though this looks wide, just looking at the packaging, but we'll match it up here in a second. It's relatively similar, except it's just a shorter seat overall in length. All right, the reason I got this one is because it has this nice little cavity right here. This is gonna relieve a lot of pressure if you're out there doing a lot of road cycling. This was, I think I paid like 85 bucks. Originally, this is like a $100 saddle, but it feels really nice. It feels like it has some really good gel in there and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna provide a lot of good cushioning for the long term if we're out uh, riding this bike. All right, let's get this thing on the bike. One well, awesome thing about this seat post is it just has one bolt that you undo and you can take your whole saddle off and adjust everything just by that one bolt. I don't know, it just feels very, very flimsy. But hey, I guess it, it got the job done, but we're gonna swap this thing out. Let me uh, compare the dimensions here. So this is both of them, and you could tell this one's just way shorter, this one's really long. But overall, I guess it's just a, a touch wider on this one, but Good gosh, this one is just way shorter, but I think it's gonna look really good on here. All right, let's get this thing installed. And we held out for a little bit, but I wanted to throw it in this upgrade series 
and just go ahead and add that saddle as part of this. So overall, not too bad for this, this stage of the build. We got the Shimano Claris crank set. We took off the stock chain rings and everything, converted it over to a single, and then we did that by using the wolf tooth, single chain ring up front here, and we have the drop stop B version of this. It does retain its narrow wide teeth, and that is what actually came on this bike. So that is good to run with this chain. But overall, this thing just looks good. It performs very, very nicely. And with the Shimano Holotech bottom bracket that we installed, could not be happier. This thing is just super smooth. And it's gonna be just an overall really good upgrade for anybody looking to upgrade this Poseidon X bike. really like this wolf tooth drop stop chain ring that we have on here it's just super high quality I mean for around 89 bucks just for the chain ring I mean you would expect some quality out of it but this is about the only manufacturer that manufactures single chain rings that replace your Shimano style road chain rings so that's why it has like the the special spacing and everything but overall it works really good and you can see how lined up that is. It is pretty much straight in line with the cassette in the back. It really does preserve its dimensions and everything and the correct angles that it should. So for around 200 bucks for the total cost of this assembly here, it's not too bad. So we have the Shimano Claris crank set, bottom bracket, and that wolf tooth. So it's probably around 200 bucks, give or take. I hope you like this stage two build of this Poseidon X bike. And we went through a lot of different things, changed the bottom bracket, crank set, front chain ring, the saddle, and we changed the pedals, which were all upgrades that really needs to be done to this bike just to make it way better than it comes in stock form. And it doesn't cost a lot of money. This whole upgrade uh, was probably around 300 bucks with the saddle coming in at about a hundred bucks crank set and the chain ring totaling out about 200 bucks there but overall not a very expensive build that's really going to transform this bike into something way better than it was before all right guys if you like this kind of stuff please help me out on the channel like and subscribe and i will catch you in those future videos